So it's Tosh for Stone Dead TV, and I'm with festival director Neil Maynell. How are you? Not bad at all, Tosh. Thanks for having me back again, my friend. Lovely. I can't yeah. believe it's been a year. I know, I know. We stood here and we mentioned a certain band, didn't we, I think, last year that, that may have been headlining. So. <laughs> so, and now it's coming to fruition at last. Excellent. I was just saying, I've just had a word with Chris, and uh, the lineup this year is absolutely fantastic. It is so good. But. You, you you handle the logistical side of it and the security side, which is a totally different thing, a totally yeah. different challenge in itself. Yeah, it is. And this week it's been a really eclectic like collection of weather. We've had like the, 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 the sunshine, dead hot, we got sunburn yesterday, then eighty mile an hour winds, and then we had like sun a no more rain and a bit of spit today. And this morning it's been chucking down again and now it's back to being sunny. So, you know, with all that you've got everything with a the stage, uh, there's all the different managers, all the different heads and stuff, and then you've got to get six thousand people on to the site uh, off a minor B road up here and with an air join there on a bank holiday Friday and they all come in at the same time and they all start whining on on social media and you think oh my god it's all gone wrong and then one toilet's not got a, a bog roll in it so they go on social media and say it's a disgrace and and I get all my managers in and say right come on let's get let's get this sorted out and in the end it's only a few problems and the majority you know we've got 5,000 people onto a small site and everybody's having good fun now and having a beer from five six years ago now is this yeah six, six years yeah. isn't it yeah we won off and <laughs> um to today what's the main difference for yourself that you found I just I find that when you when you do a small festival like this, the the, the big ones, if you've got like eighty thousand and it moves to eighty five thousand or ninety, it's like it doesn't really matter that much. But when you when you like start at two and three and it goes to four and five, you've only got an extra five hundred people. All of a sudden, it's the space and the vendors need to be prepared to have more food and the bar needs to have more beer and we've got to have more wristbands and more staff and more volunteers and more security. That the, the gradually as you go up, so the atmosphere just feels fuller. Last night. Friday just felt fuller it felt as though there was a lot of people in there everybody's smiling away and um, it's just the whole atmosphere like the you know the the, the lineup now all four of the, the the top four could have been headliners in the first cup in the first two years so to have that kind of lineup that Chris has produced is, is fantastic to have you know Darrow and an ugly kid Joe and then KK and then Saxon is just amazing amazing do you have much to do with the lineup at all yourself and Louise yeah yeah we chat we chat about it all the time we talk we talk about it, he comes up with some ideas. He comes up with some great ideas. Like I'd never heard a tail gunner before and I've just watched them now and I'm buzzing. Absolutely brilliant, like going back to the eighties and I would have never heard a tail gunner. Eventually I would have got hold of them, but he says, oh, check this band out. So we have a quick listen on Spotify and I said, these are brilliant. And then we go and catch them if they're on tour somewhere. Uh, and then he'll come out with some little bits and pieces here. And the way that he does the, um, the opening poll as well, you get to listen to loads of different bands that are on other festivals like Call of the Wild and you know, the, you, know you can see these bands that are in the poll and you think they're brilliant, I'll go and check them out. Uh, and then later on, the, the, definitely the headliner, we've wanted sax since from day, you know, from day one, that's, that's been pretty, pretty well documented. And the likes of KKs, it's like having two headliners in one, it's incredible. So um, we all discuss it, and then we look, then we say to Chris, "Here's our wish list," and he says, "Well, here's what money we've got available, and <laughs> and I'll take it off your logistics if you you know you don't if you want bigger bands or smaller bands, then you know the money gets shared around." So we all chat about it, the three of us. Yeah, it, it's it's gone from strength to strength. It's the I've, I've just said to Chris now, you've created your own problem mm. by having such good lineups every single year. Yeah. And how do you move forward from that? Uh, we, said, we said before this one, this will be our Donington, 80, Donington 84 was what inspired me to get into this. It was the best day on earth, sunny day, and ACDC, Van Halen, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, Gary Moore, Motley Crue, Accept, Y&T, were all there at Donington that day. And that kind of inspired it. And I said jokingly, this is kind of our 84. You know, uh, as a smaller festival to have Saxon and, and Priest and Ugly Kid Joe and Doro and all the other great bands. So we've kind of peaked here. But it's always going to be a challenge now to get better bands and make the make the, the list strong all the way down. So what Donington did towards the beginning, you know, you know, the opening bands were Motley Crue in 84, who suddenly became almost a headliner band a few years later. So we're kind of introducing those bands and making it bigger and bigger as we go along. So there is a bit of pressure, but the, you know, it's a great pressure to have in it. You know, the fact that people are expecting a good lineup. Chris has got the money. None of us get paid as everybody knows. So we all do it for volunteering. So all the money goes back into the show. So if Chris wants to spend a big whack on a, on a great headliner and a great, uh, you know, special guest and a few bills, then he's got the money to do it because we don't say, oh, we want 50 grand for this and 50 grand for that. We just all work on that, on that, that shoestring budget. So, uh, yeah, the, the pressure's there, but you know, 
what a great pressure to have, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not a bad problem, really, yeah. is it? Yeah. Be honest. Yeah. And festivals of this size, I think, I think people are embracing festivals of this size more now. I mean, back in the day, we we, we never had as many festivals. It was your one or two a year, but now there's there's a multitude to choose from, mm. and they all have really great value for money, and that's yeah. the difference, I think, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And you, a lot of the major festivals now, as fantastic as they are, and the variety that they give, it, it's a lot of money. You know, it's it's a lot, few hundred quid for a ticket, it's a few hundred quid to get there, it's, you're there for five days, there's all these massive choices. Uh, but it's, you know, if you go with, with, with your partner, it's a thousand quid straight off before you even look at doing anything with it. If you go with your missus, it's 70 quid each, 140 quid. The, the beer's pretty cheap. You can take four beers in. If you want to take a little picnic in, you can have some sandwiches, so that saves you 20 quid. So the whole weekend can cost you a couple of hundred quid max, including fuel. Whereas you're looking at the big the big ones, you know, you're looking at two or 300 quid for a ticket before you even start. And it's the same with all of them. Steel Ice is great. Call of Wild is another one that's brilliant. You know, it's all, uh, de- uh, there's so many bands and it's uh, the, the, the price is good, so you can do it as an affordable weekend. And like you say, mate, right from the beginning the end of may call of the wild then donnington then steel house there's fire vault made of stone and us so it's you know it's all and it's great you know there's no rivalry between us we're all obviously after the best lineup and there's a little bit of a, a nice digging and that's right we'll get this and we'll get that but we're all mates and you know it's, it's good it's good stuff i think that's that's a good bit of competition isn't it oh yeah you're not wrong yeah every time you look at it you know oh, they've got them this year but they had them last year so i wonder whether we get away with them having them this year and stuff like that so it's you know is it too close to have them and all that but steel ice have been great to us you know they're, they're on a similar kind of ilk uh, now which we're very proud of the fact that they, they inspired us at the beginning and they have these lineups and we look at them and think oh that's a great lineup and i'm sure now that you know the likes of firebolt and, and made of stone will look at our lineups and say oh yeah they've done that and they've done that which you know in the end it's all about getting there's probably a group of about twenty thousand people that go between made of stone firebolt call the wild you know and us and they and they just pick the best one maybe they'll do two or three that year maybe they'll do them all that year but it's trying to make them affordable so they can go to you know all of them and finally what's the biggest problem you've had so far this weekend this weekend was wind unbelievably it's like, uh, meteorological wind <laughs> obviously not, yeah not any well i had wind. a kebab early on on friday <laughs> um yeah well I, I mean i'm not a stage geezer but um yeah i speak to gary all the time and jen about what's going on and um, and i was saying and he's, he's got a guy this this time who's who's measuring the wind and we all had a little meeting and I was outside doing my little video and all the Porter Blues had, had fell over and there was marquees bouncing through across the arena and crap everywhere. And um, I said, well, what's, what's the score about actually cancelling events? He says, oh, if it gets to about 42 mile an hour, we've probably got to you know, look at cancelling. I said, what is it now? He went, oh, it's 82 on stage. <laughs> and I went, no! And that's when I took that video. So we spent all of, the, all of Friday morning putting the arena back together, putting people's marquees up, doing all stuff like that. And then you look at your watch and you think, oh my God, everybody's coming in in about 20 minutes. And that's why, you know, there was problems at the gate. But yeah, there weren't this, this with, Brit, with Britain, you can either get a thunderstorm or a glorious day or high winds or drizzle or, or like it is now, it's lovely. So you definitely need toes. I think I'll run one in Barcelona next time. Then you know, all you need is water points. Yeah. <laughs> and shade. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And you're yeah. sorting that, yeah. 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 Neil, thank you so much, mate. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, mate. Always a pleasure. Thank, thank you so you, much. Sir. Cheers.